What's up everyone? Welcome into Lucas Oil Stadium. Big 10 Media Days are here, Tim. We're in the home of the Indianapolis Colts, the home of the Big 10 Championship game for day one of Media Days. Uh, it's first time here since July. Usually we come here quite often, uh, you know, a couple times a year at least. I, I guess I was here for uh, the Combine, but not really because they don't have it in here. Uh, but Kevin Warren took the stage. Uh, Jim Harbaugh took the stage. He's about to speak again over there at a at a breakout session. Michigan's players took the stage, and uh, we had seven Big Ten coaches and the commissioner of the league. Tim, what's your biggest takeaway so far from Big Ten media days? Nothing to see here. Just joking. Uh, <laughs> bottom line is, uh, it, it uh, as I think as you pointed out in the story you wrote, I mean, the Big Ten has decided to go boldly into this sea of change, which. The uh, major college football has been in now for two, two, three years, really. And it's really just got exacerbated by the Big Ten adding USC and UCLA. USC and UCLA came and knocked on the Big Ten store. Big Ten not only answered, but welcomed them in. Yeah, exactly. And uh, in two years, they're going to be part of this uh, shindig here in Lucas Oil Stadium. If, in fact, this is where it is, maybe it'll be in L.A. that year. Just to, to but, but the bottom line is, change just continues to go on in major college football. I was able to talk to uh, Kevin Warren, just grab him right after he got off the uh, podium and ask him, is the Big Ten in, in any way going to pursue Notre Dame, one form or fashion? And basically said, you know, Notre Dame is part of another uh, league right now in terms of all of their sports except uh, hockey, which is in which is in the Big Ten. And then, of course, football has got a tacit membership in the ACC with the rest of its sports. But, you know, basically said, in essence, no. But we all think that's going to be the next big dance partner that's going to come along in this whole thing. So just from Kevin Warren's comments, I mean, he seemed much more in control than he was here a year ago. Not he kind of tap danced last year. This year, he kind of like stepped up boldly to the microphone and talked about things he wanted to get done, uh, objectives they have, et cetera. And I thought it was a little bit refreshing. I think he said the word bold about 10 times. Yes, he did. He said the word transformative a few different times. He touched on NIL and how he was for it. He wants some legislation, but he's for it. He touched on conference realignment. Um, if I had to guess based on his words, I would say the Big Ten's not quite done there. Uh, if, if something were to happen and the Big Ten could add value, I think the Big Ten would absolutely do that. He touched on uh, media rights and how the Big Ten will be the richest conference in the country uh, when this, these well, media he right deals are. I don't think he actually said that. No, but but we all expect that to be the case. Them to be the richest. But he knows the payday that's coming for this league. Yes. And if you use the term tap dance last year, if he tap danced around the questions this year, I think he tangoed this year because there you go. he was absolutely in control. I, I will give a lot of credit to him. Uh, former colleague and I were very very critical of him a year ago at this time. And you know, and I was too. In the same, uh, same, yeah, um, exactly, same video. But he was aggressive. He was on point. I said in, in my in my story on LettermanRoad.com, he was clear and concise with a bold vision for the future. I'm going to stick with that. I think he did a really nice job. And as much crap as people give him for 2020, ever since the pandemic was put in the rearview mirror, Kevin Warren has done a pretty good job here with this league. And he seems to be very comfortable in the position that he's in now as one of the transformative leaders of this sport. And I think that means just absolutely great things for the Big Ten, for Ohio State especially, because Ohio State will always be the flag bearer of this conference and the standard bearer. And to have somebody leading them the way that Kevin Warren plans to lead them through the next few years with a bold and transformative vision, I think that stands to help Ohio State the most. And that's, that was my main takeaway. Obviously, Har Jim Harbaugh is going to be Jim Harbaugh, and you're going to hear things from the Michigan players about Ohio State. But if we're looking at the, the number one takeaway, it was just how confident and controlled uh, Kevin Warren was at that podium this morning. Yeah, but, you know, as far as you say bold, I mean, I think that's, I think that's the best way of putting it. But, but saying he has a bold vision, what is that vision? You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, that wasn't really delineated. You know, he didn't, he didn't talk about how much uh, – how, how much uh, Big Ten teams will be sharing, for example. He hasn't come up with the number yet, even As though Jim most Harbaugh people. Walks back by Jim right Harbaugh now. walks by. Uh, he didn't talk about, you know, it didn't give any specifics on things. He didn't even give specifics on whether or not they are necessarily looking to expand again. Yep. To, but but they are open to it. They would definitely be open to it. Uh, but, you know, there were. There was a lot of talk about being bold, but I don't think there were a lot of specifics on what they were going to be bold about. Yeah. And I think that's where 
it gets a little murky because that's when you start to project or maybe try to predict what's going to happen right and, now. Hey, predicting the future compared to five years ago, would we be talking about some of the things we're talking about now? No. Absolutely. And so when you look at the, the plan forward for the Big Ten, it includes, like I said, a massive payday, the Scrooge McDuck payday that, they'll, that the Big Ten's about to get. It includes uh, maybe new television partners, as the Big Ten kind of hinted at with Kevin Warren there a little bit. I would expect to see a new television partner in there with Fox. Uh, he definitely mentioned Fox a couple times, which leads you to believe that the driving force behind all of this is that partnership with Fox. Um, and, and I think they have a new vision for what the Big Ten Network can be with you know streaming and things like that. And yeah. so, uh, bold. The good, good thing is, I mean, what I like about Kevin Warren is, what I like about him a lot is he has an open mind to things. He didn't, he's not necessarily saying this is the way it's going to be. He has an open mind about, I mean, committees, for example, Christina M. Johnson's going to be part of the college football playoff, you know, committee moving forward mm -hmm. now. And she, you know, they're really looking forward to her input, for example. She is, I think, more and more asserting herself in the Big Ten ways of doing things, et cetera, and maybe even nationally. And I think that that bodes well for this conference. One of the things that I kind of have been thinking about all day is, uh, so last week I listened to Jim Phillips at the ACC press uh, media days and how almost tepid he was in the way that he was talking about traditionalism and, and being what college athletics is all about and, and understanding what the mission, the real mission is here. And then you flip it over to the SEC and you talk about Greg Sankey, who was all about how much money can we make? When can we make it? And why can we make it? How? And yeah. I think Kevin Warren was the perfect balance of those two ideas today. He mentioned the bowl partners, how important they are. They're never going to shy away from the Rose Bowl. But at the same time, the Rose Bowl wasn't a big game that was mentioned specifically like it is every year when we come to this and we hear him speak at that podium. He talked about student athletes at the forefront and everything. But every time he talked about USC and UCLA, he made sure to mention, well, we, we do this with, with academics in mind, but it certainly doesn't help with, or it certainly doesn't hurt with, with athletics. And so there's a little bit of a shift in the way that he's beginning to speak about these things. And I think he's kind of trying to toe the line there between not being a traditionalist, but also not going full bore on this is a money making operation and we're here to make money. Well, but yeah. he also understands that. And so that's why I think right now, he might be, and he is the guy to lead them, but I think he might be the right guy to lead them at this point in time because he's ready to mix those things. And he understands that you have to worry about the money a little more than maybe the Big Ten had been worried about before. Obviously, the payday is, is what's driving that. But, but well, I, the thing about it is the Big, the Big Ten commissioner is not really unlike the NFL commissioner in a lot of ways because he works for mm -hmm. the schools involved, just like the Big the NFL commissioner works for the 32 teams involved. And... Uh, you know, he answers to people. You know, Kevin Warren isn't just like Jim Delaney. They're not just sitting up in, a, in some tower somewhere making proclamations, et cetera. They answer to people. And it's important for them to give leadership along that way, but also to give guidance on what it is the the real ruling part of the Big Ten want where they want to go. And one of the main things he pointed out here, and everybody, you know, gives this short trip, and that's okay. But there's gotta be a differential between high school football, college football, and the NFL. And the differential for the for the college football has always got to be somewhere in the midst of it all. Academics matter, mm -hmm. and that's a point he made emphatically a couple of times. And you know, most people it just goes right over their head because we're here. Why are we here? We're here to figure out who's going to win the Big Ten championship, who isn't, who's talking boldly, who isn't about their chances. Mm -hmm. Like Michigan, Michigan feels so much better about itself than it did here a year ago. It's crazy. Uh, the players, the coaches, etc. But you know, it's part of his mission is you've got to keep academics sort of in the core of it because that's what differentiates it from the NFL at this point. Yeah, and I think that's a good that's a point well taken. And you know, like you said, I think we'll transition a little bit here to, to the comments made by by some of the folks from Ann Arbor. You know, Michigan took the podium, seemed very confident in everything that's going on up there. Uh, I think that the storyline there was was what Eric all said. I'm I'm going to take this quote and probably store it until November. He said. Uh, he wasn't surprised that Michigan beat Ohio State last year. And when he was asked why, he simply said, I watched the film. And he yeah. watched Michigan's film. Yeah. And uh, just like Josh Gaddis, the former offensive coordinator there, said. That was almost, it's almost a company line at this point in Ann Arbor. And I, I think that's pretty telling uh, for the state of the programs in November of last year. Let me interrupt you, though. Ryan Bay watched the same film. Yeah. yeah. So, and so that's I, why changes were made. And so the changes were made. And we're going to hear about those changes tomorrow. But 
like you said, the, the folks from Michigan are about as confident of a bunch walking around this building, um, mostly because they know how to get around here now since they came here last December for the first time and won, a ga won the, the game here. But also to just, you know, to get that monkey off their back, not have to face those questions of when are you going to beat Ohio State? Uh, that's got to be great. And to see all these Ohio State beat writers continue to ask them questions despite them finally winning that game, it had to feel a little refreshing for them. Yeah. Um, we're still yet to hear from Jim Harbaugh, but uh, I imagine he's going to be. Well, the we heard from boy. him. We just haven't been able to. Uh, we haven't had the one hour session with him to ask questions. Uh, but the interesting thing was I asked Coach Pat Fitzgerald, Northwestern, you know, I said, and this, I know this is a loaded question. I said, but in a way, was it good for the conference that someone other than Ohio State won the conference last year? You know, he knew what I was getting at, meaning if it's just going to be a continual Ohio State Buckeyes parade, you know, uh, really, is, it, is that good for any conference like Alabama and the SEC? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, people forget, you know, Georgia beat Alabama in the national championship game last year. They don't forget. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, there was a little bit of a new blood pumped in there. You know, I know Ohio State fans hate the fact that Michigan beats Ohio State in anything, but it does give everybody else a little bit of hope that maybe this uh, uh, this juggernaut known as Ohio State football can be can be done in if, in fact, uh, the homework isn't done by the Buckeyes. With that said, Ohio State was a unanimous pick this year uh, by the poll conducted by Cleveland.com uh, to win the Big Ten Championship again. So that is the mountain they're all climbing. But 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 yes, I mean, it does give everybody a little bit of hope that, you know, uh, you take care of business, you got a shot. And it also gives Ohio State a reason to kind of recalculate, reconsider, and, and reevaluate everything that they've been doing. And so yeah. maybe it I'm is I'm just helping. glad that gag gaggle of people behind us has finally moved on. That's yeah. my big deal. But now we can finally see the Big Ten logo that everybody yeah. loves. Uh, but I think for a, from Ohio State's perspective, it's almost refreshing it, you know, in a roundabout way, just because they get to refocus now and, and, yes. and focus on exactly what they need to do before they can get to that playoff, and that's handle handle business in the rivalry, uh, win the Big Ten, come to this building, dominate a Big Ten West opponent, and then get to the playoff. That didn't happen last year, and uh, and that's that's why Michigan was able to capitalize on that. Uh, boldly change, boldly change. I think I think definitely Ryan Day did that. We'll be talking about that tomorrow, though, in our wrap up, right? Absolutely. But, but Absolutely. the bottom line is, yeah, uh, Ryan Day responded and got it done. Now the interesting thing is, for example, is somebody going to come out of the West again? Is you know Iowa got thumped by Michigan in the Big Ten championship game. My we we saw a couple of the of teams here from the West here today. Iowa was here with Kirk Ferentz, Minnesota. Uh, my PJ Fleck with yeah. Minnesota's my pick to win the Big Ten West too. Why, why oh, is it yours? There we go. There why we is go. it yours? I, I I think you're a copycat. You, you, no, you look over there on those at those tables. You see Tanner Morgan, the returning starter, who's got his offense coordinator back, Kirk Sharaka. You see a uh, returning running back who they're really confident about. PJ Fleck talked a little bit about Ibrahim Mah Muhammad. Muhammad Ibrahim. Today. About Muhammad Ibrahim, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who, who looks like he's you know ready to go, and and you look at a defense that that is not not going to be bad by any stretch. The offense should be good, except you know they lose some offensive line pieces, but yeah. It's Minnesota and Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin. You can guarantee death taxes and those three offensive lines being pretty good. So I don't and plus, know. I, I think PJ Fleck has built that program the right way. I mean, yeah, it's a consistent program at this yeah. point. And so it used to be. I mean, used to be it used to be the land of when they were trying to replace Glenn Mason, bringing guys in uh, with some kind of like ridiculous offense or defense or weird stuff. They gotten away from that. PJ Fleck is as much as everybody, a lot of people don't don't like his row the boat, uh, et cetera approach. It it is all about building things from the base up. Yep. You know, he learned that from Jim Trussell and others, and that's what I like about him. And like you just talked about, uh, uh, Muhammad Ibrahim, he was the first guy to really in Minnesota to reveal the cracks that eventually did in Ohio State in its Absolutely. shot at trying to win five straight Big Ten championships last year. Uh, until he got hurt in that game, my goodness, that was all they could handle. Yeah, exactly. And so I like what Minnesota brings. Obviously, I heard from Iowa today, and I think Iowa's going to be pretty good. And then my, maybe my opinion changes tomorrow if I hear a confident Wisconsin bunch. But who's, who knows, really? I, I know who I'm picking to win the Big Ten East right now, and that's Ohio State because they're the best team in the league, and, and I think everybody kind of understands that. I think that's one of the, the other takeaways, my final thought from this week. Listen to all these guys. Anytime they're asked about Ohio State, I think they almost understand how big of a challenge it is yeah. to beat Ohio State. And I think even the Michigan guys understand how big of a challenge that was, and, and that's why they've even went further. You know, we talked – Cade McNamara said, you know, they were going – 
and doing extra reps for Ohio State last year. This year they're doing an hour worth of extra work to, to stay Ohio there. State period. Yeah, and so you know it, it's just interesting to me that everybody still kind of understands, despite the fact that Ohio well, State's not on top of this league right now, they are the top team in the league. Yeah. And uh, we'll hear from them tomorrow as we wrap up things here inside Lucas Oil Stadium. I guess this is a rapid reaction. I don't really know what we'll exactly call it. Big Ten Media Day recap day it was the one. First half, first half of the teams, kind of a mishmash of teams. But, uh, you know, they, they mix east and west here. And we'll, yeah. we'll hear from the other, other uh, what, how many, seven tomorrow. Letterman Row will be on the ground, boots on the ground coverage from Indianapolis, as well as, you know, give a shout out to the other on three sites, the, the, the Penn State site, the Michigan site. Uh, there's a lot of folks from on three, your national folks, NIL, Writers, Ivan uh, Mazel is here. News desk, Ivan Mazel, you know one of the the biggest figureheads of our of our Pete company. Pete Nakos, is that, yeah. how you is that how you say it? Yeah, Nakos. yeah, the on three writer. Yeah. Uh, for NIL, so we've got a lot of guys here. We've got a lot of coverage coming at Letterman Row and on three all week long and all season long. The Ohio State Buckeyes will be in Indianapolis tomorrow. For Tim May, I am Spencer Holbrook. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the Letterman Lounge message board, and we will see you tomorrow.